All right. So let me re-record this, you know, as news continues to come out about the AFL 3.0. Lee Hutton has apparently resigned. That is not completely confirmed yet. Jeff Fisher is looking to be brought in by the owners who are disgruntled, angry, flummoxed, mad, all sorts of different things. Everybody is mad. Players are not getting paid. Arenas are not, you know, getting their home dates that they were supposed to. And everything's gone pretty badly this past week. It's a little bad week of indoor arena football. It happened. Um, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's been rough. It's been rough. Um, Lee Hutton, you know, finally has been replaced. Um, even though, you know, the bylaws apparently state that he can't be removed, but, you know, the owners are going to remove Hutton anyway, you know, you know, with Jeff Fisher, which is crazy, but it is what it is. You have teams, you know, like Minnesota, um, you know, you know, Minnesota, Georgia, Philly, they all fold, they all fold you know it's crazy it's crazy crazy stuff it's crazy stuff it's crazy crazy stuff let me edit that a little bit there uh, Louisville I mean not Louisville Louisiana also technically folds uh, I know James Shivers was making fun of Lee Hutton and the company on social media and everything like that. But, you know, Louisiana's done. Georgia's done. You know, Justin Arth, you know, bless him because he was trying to get players home. And I couldn't donate to the GoFundMe, but I know the goal got reached of, you know, players getting, you know, flights back home because of how bad it was. Like, there's players stranded here you know, West Texas is somehow still in this thing because they paid the NAL off. Everything Zach Bug and the company paid off the AFL. Um, really, there was only three games because, you know, again, Minnesota died. And the Hutton's trying to blame the media and the fans and everybody else, which is disgusting tactics, disgusting tactics by the Huttons. So... Yeah, blaming us, blaming the people that caught on to your nonsense is absolutely asinine. It's crazy. It's stupid. But, hey, what's done is done, and now the Huttons are out. Um, again, Rapid City, you know, West Johnson and Company, I know they're doing their best. But, you know, you know, I've gotten some conflicting things. You know, I've heard that, you know, from one of the best that Rapid City doesn't really have the money to continue uh, because of, you know, not being able to play Billings. Um, the players haven't been paid, so they can't play anyway. You know, they, they're not they're not playing for $250. They're trying to play for 1000 But again, the CIF AFL merger stuff, which was, again, a dumb decision in the first place, but, you know, CIF still has to make dumb decisions even when it dies. So, yeah. Again, it's a weird situation. It's a rough situation. It's a weird one all around. And I don't know how we're going to fix it. You know, there's there's only so much we can do. You know, there's only so much we can do. As people who come to the sport, you know, because I just don't know at this point. I want the AFL to survive somehow at the same time. The logical part of me is saying, the rational part of me is saying, let's not have this thing go for more than this year. This this was, this was is a disaster for the jump. It has been a disaster for the jump, and now things have been ruined to the point where you're now down to 11 teams. So, yeah, it's rough. Uh, two championships have been set. 
Um, I don't really want to talk about more AFL right now, but two championships have been set. Um, one, the AIF, because Cedar Rapids has basically said, nah, we're not going to play AIF teams no more. We're going to play semi pro teams and not have those games broadcast and lie about where these games are going to be broadcast because obviously I'm not sure what Cedar Rapids was thinking, saying that MC22 was going to broadcast a game with a Civic Pro team, but they did broadcast their first home game. So I don't understand, you know, where that's coming from. You know, I'm hearing rumors that Cedar Rapids doesn't have any money. But, you know, of course, the thing, you know, that happened, you know, with Montero and, and my boy Shady Sports, you know, that kind of boiled over to where Montero got suspended and the AIF said, well, well, the owners got together and they said, yeah, you guys can do what you want, basically. Basically, Cedar Rapids technically kind of left the league of their own accord to play semi-pro opponents, which messes up the schedule. But it doesn't really matter because Corpus Christi, who lost to Amarillo on Saturday night, by the way, will play Columbus in the AIF championship game in Columbus, obviously, on June 14th. The other championship game that was somehow set because uh, probably because the Detroit Knights aren't playing, probably because, you know, the other teams in the GLF aren't playing. But, yeah, it's going to be Michigan because Wheeling's broadcast said, hey, we could drop the news for y'all because y'all not going to drop it. But, yeah, the since the GLAF website has not been updated, since West Michigan wants to post about other things, and, you know, I get it. Uh, rest in peace to the guy who um, wears the West Michigan, you know, the mascots outfit. Rest in peace to that guy. Um, I don't know his name, but I do know that was what the post was about from West Michigan. That's the last post they had which was just a couple days ago, and their last post before this was April 20th. So, you know, kind of wanted to know who you were going to play the championship. Not not a post about, you know, that, but it is what it is, you know. Again, the community is showing love and support to the guy who passed away, and I give my condolences to them as well. I mean, usually don't do that, but, you know, you know, but I, I will, you know, on this occasion, uh, because, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, West Michigan will be played the Michigan Avengers. The Michigan Avengers got beat up by Wheeling 57-18 in a Sunday Mother's Day matinee. You know, uh, a couple other games played on Mother's Day included the Salina Liberty beating Nashville in a crazy game 50-30, to you know, I don't even want to really talk about how bad that game was. West Texas Washington was also a bad game, 34-21, um, with Chris Siegfried being on social media. Don't know why he's on social media, just talking, just yapping at this point. Southwest Kansas blew it against Wichita, so it's 44-42 in the only game on Monday night because, again, the Albany game got canceled. Uh, again, you know, there's nothing else you can really say, you know, about, you know, the GLAF, the AIF or anything, but the NAL definitely could say something about that for a little bit because Omaha, you know, beat Sioux City 33-6. Their winning streak continues. And then Oklahoma went dormant the day after. They went dormant the day after, you know, um, last this week in indoor football. They went, they went dormant. You know what the word dormant technically means. You, it either means that Oklahoma, the Oklahoma, the Flying Aces will f try their best to find a way to play a 2045 or they're dead. So Oklahoma's going to try and restructure for 2025. Um, the Dallas Prime came back and somehow, you know, they came back somehow. They beat the Texas Hotshots 56 to nothing. That's crazy. Jacksonville still cannot get out of their own way, you know, meatball and the backup quarterback Harrington, you know, decided to strut their strut and beat the brakes off of Jacksonville, Minnesota, you know, again, dead. 
But Massachusetts, on the other hand, lost to Iowa, which was very surprising. It was 21 to three at one point. And, you know, it was crazy. It was crazy. The best game of the weekend by far was probably the Vegas game. Um, that was a really fun game between them. Really, really, really good stuff between Vegas. <laughs> there you go. Yes, I'm tired. Getting pretty tired, so forgive me. But yeah, it's it's certainly been a week. You know, TL the TL signing guys, but that's we're not gonna talk about that right now. Uh yeah, San Diego, Vegas was a 68-64 affair that I fell asleep to at the end. Quad City, Sioux Falls was a great game, 56-49 Quad City. Um, again, Tulsa surprisingly did not put up much of a fight against Green Bay, 42-22 Green Bay. Again, like I said, Iowa with a two-game winning streak now, you know, beating the Massachusetts Pirates, 42-34 Gunslingers. 56 54 over Duke City. Duke City still winless. And the games in Arizona to end the night. Um, Northern Day Arizona loses to Bay Area 39 36. And the Arizona Rattlers beat Tucson 38 36. So, yeah. Um, IFL, again, good games all around. You know, action packed, fun games. What else can you really say about the IFL that has been said already this year? They are the cream of the crop, you know, this year. You know, people are going to rag and say, oh, well, uh, production values, blah, 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 you know. Uh, guys are still getting paid, you know, this, such, and such. I know some people are going to rag on that. Um, and I know some people, you know, who are other content creators are going to, you know, beef with each other for no reason. Uh, to be completely honest with you, like we're supposed to be together in all this, but y'all y'all gotta stop beefing. Like y'all do it, y'all do it too much. Uh, and I believe, and I believe both men who know who, I'm, and I believe I know both men. You know, both men probably are watching this, so they know what I'm talking about. So you know, in this conflict that I've been watching, I've been Twitter watching. You know, this conflict for like. A while now and they just they just kept going and it kept going and it kept going and it got annoying kind of like the afl 3.0 which got really annoying this week you know has been really really bad again for the state of the sport you know it, it's just it's i don't even know how to say it properly because again i'm, I'm kind of stumbling over my words a little bit because i'm just exasperated at how many teams decided to say we're not playing this week or we're folding, going dormant, playing city pro teams for the rest of the year, whatever. It's disgusting to be quite frank with you. It's disgusting behavior from the Huttons. It's, you know, you know, the owners still feel, I still feel like the owners are getting duped a little bit here because again, the best course of action would be to stop the AFL 3.0 right now. And let you know, and let these other teams, you know, do their thing. But that's not gonna. That's not how this works. Um, you know, like we should be seeing a CIF right now. We really should be, and you know, we should be seeing a stronger NAL right now. But we don't. We have you know a bunch of leagues, you know, again, which you know, I don't know at this point, and you know, the Lee Hunt and stuff has just been at absolute disaster to follow you know like god i don't even know man like uh, i'm lo i'm losing brain cells just thinking about this whole thing because day after day after day after day after day things kept happening the past week you know not even 30 minutes after i made this week in the door football last week things kept going you know you had guys like chris sigfried who honestly really shouldn't be, be on Twitter talking to people. Like, just tweet. Don't even respond to stuff about the AFL. Just tweet what you want to tweet. You know, we don't really care about that. But once you get once you get to the football side of things, you know, because you were involved with the whole West Texas thing. You had 
you had every, you know, right to be involved in the West Texas thing. You have every right to be involved in it because you were a part of that situation. You were a part of the situation that caused this in the first place. Yeah. Like, just just don't say anything. Lee Hunt, at least he's silent. Chris Siegfried, I don't even know, I don't even know what guy's problem was. You know, Wes Johnson's trying to save Rapid City again, you know, but is Rapid City, you know, going to be saved? Because now I'm hearing from a very trusted source, a good friend of ours, you know, Mr. Mernier, that Rapid City is losing money because the players did play, you know. Again, the players did not play. Two to zero score for Billings. Billings gets the win by virtue of Rapid City basically forfeiting. But um Rapid City, you know, they want to have faith in this league. You know, so the Stephen Titus, he wants to have faith in this league. He's called out Lee Hutton. He, now, you know, everything has kind of boiled over, but probably not. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see next Sunday, man. We'll see on Sunday how things continue to go because, again, I'm expecting more dominoes to fall in the AFL. <sighs> We're down to four teams in the AF. We're down to five in the NAL. We're down to 11 in the AFL. We had 13 in the AAL, too, to begin the season. Now we're at nine, which is now separated the divisions for some reason, but whatever. You know, a North and South division. You know, um, the GLAF has never updated its website. There's no updates anywhere of any kind from any of the teams. And yet the IFL, you know, people, you know, continue to say, oh, well, yeah, yeah. You know, this is the best league. They keep getting sports center top 10 moments and everything. So, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to get on about it here before I continue to ramble and talk about, you know, just keep going and ranting about the AFL 3.0. Is this a win for the AFL 3.0 today? Maybe. I don't know. I, I'm I'm tired. I'm, I'm I'll see you all on Sunday because I, I just I just can't talk about this anymore for the time being because hopefully nothing happens this week. I really hope so. Yeah, this is a bad week. This is a bad week. <sighs>